single word answer on that is acoustics. I love equipment, don't get me wrong, but we still have a need to listen and make decisions. In fact, more than ever, we have a need to listen and make audio decisions in accurate environments. Keep an eyeball on, on specific reflective surfaces. They can get in the way, but they can also be your friends. A lot of old-time engineers used to aim saxes and trumpets into a glass, okay, and get the sound to bounce off to a mic in addition to the mic because they actually wanted to have a little flanging. They wanted to have a little bit of a comb filter, okay? So look around. Instead of, we're just going to put three gobos in because that's how we did it, etc., etc. We're in the world of some very cool predictive software, both low-frequency modeling and oralization software, so we can listen to what environments sound like from drawings. We explored some of that. Um, we as an office use, we, if it's out there, we're using it, or we're testing it and, and using it. That's really in the last five and 10 years uh, at a desktop level, desktop computer level. So that's also very, very exciting, but it doesn't replace sketching. It doesn't replace thinking. It doesn't replace listening to a client to really understand what they're trying to do. And it shouldn't drive dreams. Dreams should use the equipment. In the case of Jazz at Lincoln Center, these programming was very well defined. The people who were behind that project knew what they were doing. Winton knew exactly what he wanted, to the most part. But sometimes it's really vague. So we got to get programming, okay? And then there's that lightning bolt moment. There's that Mozart moment where visions start to take place. Sometimes it's a vision that the client has. He tears something out and says, hey, I want it to look like this. That's a little boring, but that's okay. Sometimes it's a dream that we have. Sometimes it's an architectural dream. Sometimes it's a sonic dream. Often in the studio world, we are matching standards that everybody agrees to. So that's acoustic standards, and we're okay with that. We are in an industry. There's a goal. So we're paid to solve certain problems. We don't mind that. So it's a kind of a combination of programming, the Mozart moment, the lightning bolt moment, and then solving known problems. Being a good listener, I think, is, is one of the keys. Um, because most artists, and if you think about it, most of the studios we're doing now are for artists. They may not be for famous artists, but they're for an artist. They just haven't been famous yet. Um, they got a very, very specific program. They may not be able to express it in words, um, but somewhere in there is their dream. So I'm trying to yank that out transform it into architecture, <laughs> economic, get it solved economically, make it work acoustically. They just assume we're going to do that. Okay, somehow get it built, and at the same time put a little bit of my dream into it.